starts right now. Don't be afraid to step up and sponsor some people. It started out as a sponsorship of one Ukrainian family on Thanksgiving. Now that kindness is extended to their extended family. How they're celebrating Christmas together free from war in the United States. And it might just look like a room to you, but it means so much more to children who have survived abuse. What inspired this new way of creating a safe space for the most vulnerable? Security, more happy, more comfortable, um, more in family, more it's totally different. The path to becoming a homeowner can be a long one for so many families, but it's worth the wait. Hear this family's path to ownership and how their Christmas wish came true. Well, the war in Ukraine is far from over, which means many Ukrainian families are still seeking refuge. Some coming here to the United States. And after one local man sponsored Ukrainian family, he decided to take it a step further, sponsoring that family's extended family. The night team's Alyssa Cole shows us how this one big family is celebrating their first Christmas in San Antonio. <laughs> From Ukraine to the United States, the Ilan family is together again. I'm more calm because my family is close. After fleeing the war in Ukraine, Dmitry is reunited with his extended family, including his brother, Alexander. Yo hablo con mis amigos. I talk to my friends and they tell me still every day they are nervous. Texas native Stephen Dello originally sponsored Alexander, who we interviewed on Thanksgiving when he and his family just arrived to the U.S. And now Dello has extended his sponsorship, bringing in Alexander's brother, Dimitri, and his family, helping both families full time. I had to quit my job in order to do that, but it was a small price to pay to get this done. Alexander is already making strides. I have permit for work. I have the new apartments, I have car. Tonight, the newly formed family is spending their first American Christmas together. I like living with Steve because Steve helps me and the others. This is by far the, going to be the most memorable Christmas I think I have ever spent in my life. Merry Christmas! Yeah, the Illins are happy to start the new year in the U.S. together. After the holidays, they plan to enroll their children into school while Alexander and his brother start job hunting. Thank you, Alyssa. On this Christmas Eve, we know it's been a cold start to the holiday season, but these cold temps in Bear County, they're going to start to ease up. Today, county officials announcing they're ceasing their relief operations after three days. Tonight will be the last night for emergency warming centers throughout the county. We're going to check in with meteorologist Mia Montgomery. Tell us what we can expect the next few days. Yeah, exactly, Max. We are going to start to see a warming trend take place as we head into next week. But until we can get there, it is still going to be another very cold night across south central Texas. Another hard freeze is expected by wake up time Christmas morning with those temperatures down in the low 20s yet again. Let's briefly take a look at current conditions outside 30 degrees over at San Antonio International. A calm wind, though, so that is the good news, not as as bad of a wind chill factor out there tonight. But as Santa makes its way into South Central Texas, it is going to be very cold for him and his reindeer. Temperatures falling through the low 20s again by wake up time. We will see plenty of sunshine tomorrow, helping those temperatures warm into the upper 40s and low 50s. So a little bit warmer than what we saw out there earlier this afternoon. And speaking of Santa, we are tracking him here in the case at Weather Center, last seen in Quebec, Canada. So he has made his way to North America and he's already delivered f over 5 billion presents. So definitely uh, making his way farther down to the United States. We'll be tracking him throughout uh, the newscast, Max. Thank you, Mia. Well, they might have come in for some Kohl's cash, but instead they left with Kohl's merchandise and they didn't pay. All of this, according to San Antonio, police and crime stoppers. Now, authorities are hoping that these images of the suspects will help with identifying who they are and helping authorities find those responsible. So the alleged crime happened this past Wednesday at the Kohl's store on Petranco. 
Police saying the woman allegedly loaded up a grocery cart and a shopping bag full of Kohl's merchandise. This while the man allegedly grabbed a 50 inch TV. If you know either of these suspects, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. And on this Christmas Eve night, a family holding on to each other after a terrifying situation. Their house sustaining significant damage after a fire. And the cause? A space heater. All of this according to San Antonio fire officials. Now the flames happened just after 11 last night on a Meadow Trail Drive. A space heater catching fire in one of the family's bedrooms. Now that family, which included three adults and two children, they were all inside at the time of the flames, luckily managing to make it out safely. The family did have somewhere else to stay, but right now they're trying to figure out what comes next. And people in Kinney County asked to keep a lookout for five suspects who escaped Kinney County deputies after a highway chase. Now the Kinney County Sheriff's Office says the suspects are believed to be armed and dangerous. Now the chase ending on Highway 131 toward Brackettville, just about two hours west of San Antonio. Now deputies say the five suspects got out of the vehicle and they ran off. They were last seen headed towards Fort Clark Springs. People in that area are asked to keep their vehicles and their house doors locked. If you come in contact with anyone suspicious or have any information that can help authorities, you're asked to call 911 immediately. A local organization has a mission to make children who have been abused to feel safe in their own bedrooms. That organization is called Room Redux. Their founder selected from thousands of organizations as one of L'Oreal's Women of Worth. The night team's Camelia Juarez tells us how this program is now transforming lives. Like so much Since 2020, Room Redux has completed 185 room transformations, helping the healing process for the entire home. We paint, we'll do murals, light fixtures, decor, new furniture, always a new mattress, new bedding. CEO Susie Vibriel says every room transformation is tailored to the child's interest and their path to healing after experiencing abuse. What we also do is speak with the counselor to find out what kind of therapeutic tools should we put in their room? What's going to make them feel empowered and feel comfortable in their own space? So it could be tons of squishies, it can be fidget toys. Vibriel says the room transformation extends from their bedroom into the confidence they bring to the world. We find out that their grades go up. We find out that they stand a little taller. They realize that they are worth it, they are worthy. We did a room transformation right before Christmas one year and they hadn't celebrated or put up decorations in five years and now they do. As one of the 10 L'Oreal's Women of Worth, Vibriel was awarded $20,000. That's 10 children whose lives will be transformed. Room Redux takes referrals from counselors, therapists and caseworkers and there are many ways to help by donating furniture or volunteering. We have details for all of that on our website, ksat.com. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Camelia, it was the night before Christmas when all through the home a family receiving new beds to lay down their heads. Precious Dilworth and her family receiving three new beds and these are just three out of the 350 beds built and given out by the Sleep in Heavenly Peace nonprofit today, just in time for the holiday season. These beds built entirely by volunteers and distributed throughout the community. Studies show children's physical and mental health improves exponentially when they have a bed of their own to sleep in. On our website, ksat.com, we have a link where you can either gift a bed or apply for one yourself. What should have been a day of last minute shopping turned into a terrifying situation. What we now know about the sole victim of the Mall America shooting. Plus, imagine enjoying your favorite holiday tradition in your new home. That's a reality for one family with the help of Habitat for Humanity. We share their story of becoming first time homeowners. My name is MJ Einotch, and a tradition that me and my family do is that we hide a pickle in the Christmas tree, like a pickle ornament, which I thought only we did until like last year, and then I found out it's a German thing, but we're not German, so I think we just have fun with it. <laughs> Hi, my name is Azian Vermeer, and my favorite holiday tradition is we like to watch Home Alone 1 and 2 every Christmas with my girls, and now my son. Merry Christmas to everybody, everyone out there in these nutcrackers.
Welcome back. It is a wrap for this year's efforts for Habitat for Humanity, the nonprofit completing a total of 52 homes, giving back to families across our community. The night team's Jonathan Cotto was there as one local family saw their Christmas wish come true. Thanks to Habitat for Humanity, this family gets to move into their brand new home just in time for the holidays. Well, um, we're very excited. <laughs> we're very happy. Yeah, I'm very happy for my family to get a new home. Estrella says having the keys to their very own home, it doesn't feel real. We're working very hard, almost more than 20 years, to get a new home. So it's uh, our dream completely, yeah, for my kids, for my husband. The Del Rio family never thought this day would come. They say the last two decades haven't been the easiest. We pay rent. It's hard. It's hard to pay rent because it's no, it's no, nothing is yours. You throw your money, um, but uh, we don't have uh, other choice. But this Christmas, things will look and feel a little different for the Del Rios. Security, more happy, more comfortable, um, more in family, more it's totally different. For Estrella, the heart of any home is the kitchen and says she plans on cooking all the traditional fixings this Christmas. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, taking a live look out at the Alamo City, a crisp 28 degrees out. So Mia, one of the holiday traditions that we have in our household, uh, driving around on Christmas, looking at all the beautiful lights. Can we do so with, with the windows down this year? I mean, you can, but I hope that you are so bundled up with not just the coat, but probably the gloves and the scarf at that point, and a cup of hot chocolate. I remember when I was younger, my friends and I, we would do that. Our parents would kind of take turns each year, taking us all around town, and we always just had cups of hot chocolate to go with this because typically it was cold. So yes, you can do that. Just make sure that you bundle up. And that'll be the case as we have head into any Christmas morning plans. It is going to be another cold, cold start out there first thing tomorrow morning. So through the overnight hours tonight, another hard freeze expected across South Central Texas. But as we head into our Christmas day, still more sunshine found plenty of that yesterday and into today as well. All of that sunshine helping those highs climb into the upper 40s and low 50s tomorrow afternoon. So that warming trend is continuing into the afternoon hours as well. And then into next week, we'll continue to see that warming trend take place. But we'll start off with a look at those temperatures outside. Right now, you can see that most of us have, of course, fallen to or below that freezing mark. It's currently 30 degrees officially here in San Antonio over at the airport. Canyon Lake still just above freezing freezing at 34. That likely won't last too long though. 22 in Comfort as well as Rio Medina. It's 28 in Castroville and 28 down at Stinson on the south side of Bear County. Now we've got the clear skies in place. It really is a beautiful night. It's just really cold out there and calm winds. So when you combine those two things together, perfect conditions for temperatures to fall even more so through the overnight hours. So waking up Christmas morning once again, expecting low 20s for a good portion of the area. Some upper teens certainly possible across portions of the hill country for places like Bernie, Bandera, reaching over to Lost Maples as well. But because we still do have calm winds in place, that is good news when it comes to the wind chill values. Those likely aren't going to stray too far away from the actual air temperature by wake up time tomorrow, but still with that hard freeze in place, a good idea to still protect the four P's, making sure we're bringing the pets indoors, covering up sensitive vegetation outside, bringing in potted plants even better, of course, protecting pipes, making sure your sprinkler systems are still turned off, and of course, just making sure that everybody is as warm as possible. So cold, cold, cold early tomorrow morning. Morning, but we see the sunshine then rise. Of course, that's going to stick with us throughout the majority of the day, helping those temperatures climb into the upper 40s, low 50s here in San Antonio, a forecast high near about 50 degrees, 48 in Bolverde, 50 over in Hondo, 50 in Uvalde as well for that daytime high, much cooler than where we were last Christmas. If you can remember, it was almost a short sleeve kind of day. 
today. We started off at 60 degrees warm to 77 one year ago. That was above average, but this year we will be below average average high for this time of year about 63 degrees average low about 41. But with dry conditions in place, if you are stepping out for any Christmas plans and travels tomorrow across the Lone Star State, no issues there out there on Texas roadway. So that is the good news as we head into the last full week of 2022. If you can believe it, another freeze expected tomorrow night, but then that warming trend really kicks in temperatures in the afternoons near 60 Monday and Tuesday morning lows crawling their way out of the 30s near about 40 by Wednesday. And then look at those afternoon highs already in the low 70s by the second half of next week. Thank you, Mia. So speaking of Christmas, Greg, it seems like the Cowboys got an early <laughs> Christmas present. Yeah, and then there are a lot of Cowboy fans who are sitting there going, it shouldn't be this hard. Jalen Hurts is not playing. Why are we going down on the wire? Well, it did. And when we come back, we'll show you how that happened. And a new hero is born for the Dallas Cowboys. In fact, it's his first game ever wearing the star. And the Texans get their second win against the Titans coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Cowboys looking to rebound for their overtime loss last week to the Jacksonville Jaguars against an Eagles team without their star quarterback, Jalen Hurts, who is out with a shoulder injury. Now, this is what you, the way you don't want to start. First quarter, 3 nothing Philly when Dak Prescott picked up by Josh Sweat, and he returns it 42 yards to the pick six. Eagles are up 10 nothing just like that. Dallas responds when Ezekiel Elliott caps off a 75-yard drive with a one-yard touchdown, 10-7 Eagles after one. Second quarter, Dak throws to CeeDee Lamb. This is a 36-yard touchdown. Dallas leads 14 to 10, but the Eagles lead at half 20 to 17. Now Philly now 27 17 up and the Eagles turn over the ball. Dak finds Michael Gallup for the 12 yard touchdown. We're tied at 27 going into the fourth quarter. Eagles up seven when Dak sends up the prayer on third and 30 and T.Y. Hilton is First game as a Cowboy comes down with a 52-yard game. Four plays later, Dak to Lamb, and we are tied just like that, 34 all. Under five to play now. Gardner Minshew throws, but is picked up by Deron Bland. That leads to this Brett Maher 48-yard field goal. The Cowboys lead now 37-34, just over two minutes to play. Dallas without a field goal. Philly will get one more drive together, but Minshew cannot find anyone for a game-winning touchdown in the end zone. And the Cowboys hang on to win 40-34. The Eagles had four turnovers tonight. I think, you know, clearly his performance, I think going 15, to, you know, I think he went 15 completions in a row, but um, just played at a huge level tonight. You can see they crashed the run game. It did, they did, the run defense was, was really good. Uh, this might be the first of, of two times here late in the year that we're going to have to play these guys. And uh, it's just about, I, I think that was a good win. I think that was a good win just for, for the team, complimentary win. Uh, I know obviously they're going to think about that next time that we play them, and that, that's what you want. Um, but we've just got to one week at a time now focus on Tennessee as we move forward and uh, get into tomorrow. Yeah, he mentioned the Titans. They're up next, but that'll be on Thursday Night Football at 7-15. What a game between the Giants and the Vikings today. Take it to the fourth quarter, 17-16 Vikings. Kirk Cousins finds Justin Jefferson for the 17-yard touchdown. Three minutes to play. Minnesota up 24-16. Two minutes left. Saquon Barkley takes off 27 yards from the house of the touchdown. The two-point conversion is good, and we're all tied up just like that at 24 off. So this takes us to the last play of the game. Greg Joseph attempting a 61-yard field goal to win the game, and guess what? It's good and then some. 27-24 over the Giants. Minnesota 11-4, 8-1 home record. Commanders and 49ers, no score in the second quarter. Wide receiver Ray Ray McLeod, the third, gets the call. of 71-yard run to the house, the touchdown. This is actually tied at seven and halftime. After all that, it was all San Fran. Brock Purdy had back-to-back -back touchdown passes to George Kittle in the third. Niners win 37-20. San Fran is 11-4. They've won eight in a row. Let's take a look at the NFC East standings so far. And you can see Philadelphia still on top. Even though they could have clinched it today, the NFC East and home field advantage throughout the NFC playoffs. And there's Dallas 11-4, Giants at 8-6-1, Washington at 7-1-1. Kickoff of the Houston Texans game against the Titans in Tennessee was delayed by over an hour at the request of Nashville Mayor John Cooper as the city was dealing with rolling blackouts as a result of unprecedented cold temperatures. We all remember that here in Texas, right? The expected temperature at kickoff was slated to be 18 degrees, which would be the coldest temperature ever in Nissan Stadium history. The Titans' Derek Herring loves playing against Houston. Here's why. He scored 11 touchdowns against Houston in today's matchup. First quarter door score, and there goes Henry again. 48 yards from the house of the touchdown. Titans up 7 and nothing. Texas is about to strike, but Davis Mills fumbles the ball, but Rex Burkhead recovers the fumble in the end zone. That's a touchdown, folks. And 
and we're tied at seven after one, and the Titans would lead 10 to seven at halftime. Third quarter now, Titans jump back in front. Malik Willis, check out this nice little spin move, the effort. He scores from 14 yards out. Tennessee leads 14 to 10 after three. Fourth quarter now, under three minutes to play. Davis Mills finds Brandon Cooks at the back of the end zone. A six-yard touchdown. The Texans retake the lead 19-14. Last chance for the Texans. Five seconds left The Houston 43. The Hail Mary throw is picked off in the end zone by Jalen Petrie. And that's ball game, folks. Texans win their second game of the season overall, taking it 19-14 over the Titans. I'm fighting so hard week in, week out, all season. Um, and we just haven't gotten the results we wanted. But uh, we feel like really these past couple weeks and the tail end of the season, we've been, we've been putting a lot of good efforts up and putting a lot of good stuff on tape, just hadn't found a way to, a way to finish games. And today that's what we did. All right, Texas Longhorns have arrived for the Valero Alamo Bowl. Got that for you coming up a little bit later on. All right, thanks, Greg. Yep. Well, as millions of people travel ahead of Christmas tomorrow, many of them stopped by the latest winter storm, the dangerous conditions that travelers are now experiencing. And a shooting scene at the Mall of America, still under investigation, what we now know about those moments leading up to the deadly shots. My name is Stefania Jimenez. I'm an anchor here at KSAT News. And one of my favorite holiday traditions is done Boricua style, baby. So what my family and I do is we make pasteles, which is our version, the Puerto Rican version of tamales. Those are actually done weeks before. And we also make bednid, which is pork shoulder and arroz con andules. And the whole house smells like it. And I swear, whenever I smell that, it smells like Christmas to me. So that's basically our Christmas tradition. Us, all in the kitchen, cooking, dancing, laughing, very loud music, and that's just how we do Christmas at my house. We just want to wish you a very Merry Christmas, a happy holiday season, and of course, Feliz Navidad. Welcome back. New information tonight. Five people now in custody, all in connection with that deadly shooting at the Mall of America in Minnesota. Tonight, police say that they're still looking for a sixth suspect. According to the police, the entire shooting lasted only about 30 seconds. Now, we're told a group of about nine people got into an altercation in Nordstrom's. One of the men involved allegedly pulled out a gun and shot the victim multiple times. The identity of that victim still has not yet been released, but police have been in contact with his family. We do know it was a 19 year old. As for the suspects who were involved, those arrested, two of them 18 years old, the other three 17 years old. Now, the largest mall across the country, it was filled with holiday shoppers and it was under lockdown for more than an hour after the gunfire. We saw some people running towards us and I've learned that if people are running towards us and a lot of them, like you don't walk towards whatever they're running from. I had actually made a barricade in the room that I was in because the door didn't lock. And then, you know, I had to keep these girls that were with me calm and quiet as well. The Nordstrom's department store remains closed, but the rest of the mall opened today. Well, the death toll climbs to 10 after a Russian attack in Ukraine this morning. So take a look. We're going to show you video of the aftermath. At least 10 people killed and Ukrainian officials say at least 55 more injured. The head of the regional administration noted no children were among the victims of this morning shelling. The people of Kyrgyzstan are being asked to donate blood in an effort to help save lives of those people injured in the attack. And back here in the United States, police are searching for a group of women who allegedly pulled off a covert burglary at a grocery store in California. So investigators say in total, five women were involved. They posed as shoppers, distracting two clerks with all kinds of questions. At the same time, one of those women could sneak into the back of the store, look for cash. Eventually, that suspect stumbled onto a safe. The owner says the safe easily weighed 80 pounds. While she had something under her skirt, so she pulled that down and she covered, lifted the safe with one hand and covered it with that, with that, what she had with a cover. A second woman seen on camera helping her hide and lift the safe into a shopping cart. Now, police say the women took off in a getaway vehicle that was parked out front. That safe had $9,000 in it. Well, the winter storm might be hard to deal with for simple tasks, but it is proving even more difficult to travel in. 
Now the cold temperatures, the snow, and in some places the ice, it's halting travelers from making it to their Christmas destinations.